Welcome everybody, welcome back to the Barrett Channel. Um, we are here in Shanghai, um, we've been here for a couple of days. The reason we're here, we are attending a conference uh, which is being held by Huawei, all about the implementation of, of 5G. So just to give you a bit of an overview, pretty much China have rolled out 5G in a fairly um, big way across most of the major cities. So most of the major cities have got close to 100% coverage. Um, and this sort of conference was to show us how they're the, they sort of progressing with the next stage of that. And it's being um, used in industry and commerce. And it got us thinking about how 5G is going to change society fundamentally. If you, if you look at sort of 2G, 3G, 4G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Hey, nice Hello, yeah, do you want to nice be in a video? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Okay. We're just recording a this video right now, so you'll be in it. This is the fans, okay? Come on, stand in the middle. John's in, John's in. Three, two, one, cheers. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> of course you yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, let's go. Get in here, big man. Three, two, one. Cheers. Three, yeah. two, one. Cheers. Show <laughs> yourself. I'm very honored. I'm your subscriber. Oh, nice no, well. one. Thank you very thank much. You so much, guys. Cheers for following us. Thank you. Appreciate that. Cheers. Have a good day. Bye, bye. Oh, so we're just walking through Century Park. <laughs> we came across some... Uh, some of our subscribers and that's happening a little bit more often now it's funny i know it's kind it, of weird isn't it it happens in shanghai more than anywhere actually yeah. it seems anyway, anyway what i was saying right, is um uh, if you look at 2g 3g and 4g 3g and 4g we're kind of slightly incremental to each other where it kind of just increase the speed but 5G is a whole different ball game. It's seriously a game changer. That's something that I think the majority of people don't see um, is going to be the case, I would imagine. I mean, as people my age anyway, yeah. a lot of them just think it's just faster speeds. However, we've been to all these sorts of exhibitions and keynotes Seminars. at Huawei, and we're just, I'd say we're more invested in tech than the average person. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and we've just been opened our eyes to how much it's really going to change the world. Yeah, my background's engineering, electronics engineering. I, I'm a techie, which is unusual for, for people my age, I guess. And I follow it, and, and you know, t the last couple of days has really opened my eyes. And I think, I think there's, like I said earlier, there's massive implications for society in general, and and there's positives, but there's also negatives. And now. Sorry to put in. There's, yeah, there's, there's um, so many different sort of avenues we could go down, but obviously that would take an hour. So we'll kind of hone in on on. Let's go with maybe sort of manufacturing. Yeah. Uh, to start with, or you know, AI and driverless cars is another one we could go into. Yeah. Um, well, actually, and, interestingly, t today the one of the the speakers was saying that the current 5G is not really the best for driverless cars and what they're working on now is uh, with the standards authorities expanding that and, and they, they believe it's going to be called 5.5g because the upload bandwidths what is signaling is they're not ideal when it's all right when there's a few autonomous cars on the road but when there's huge amounts of autonomous cars on the road, they need bigger upload bandwidth. So they were talking about some new sort of standards. It's not going to be like 4G to 5G. It's going to be like kind of 5G enhanced. Uh, a, lot, a lot of um, sort of, like we touched on before, I think it's about faster speeds. But the more the, 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 the key point of what 5G delivers is um, low latency, right? So That's why don't you correct. just explain that for people? A little bit. So low latency means that it's like almost instantaneous and it's not obviously instantaneous because there's a finite time sort of data takes to travel from, from one place to another but it's way way closer to instantaneous than 4G was. So let's put that into a real life example. Technically so, if you were controlling an excavator which you did on a previous video so go and check that out we'll put a card here it basically means you can control this excavator or whatever it may be 
um, from a control room in Thailand and be um, controlling an excavator in China um, and the movements you make with the controllers will be almost instantaneous yeah. with the movements of the actual machine. Yeah, the goal with 5G, and that's what we were talking about this morning, is to have a latency of, of one millisecond or less. They're not quite there yet, but they are well on, on the way to that. Um, and you just think of the, the realm of possibilities that can open up. Um, you know, like you mentioned before, at some point they might be able to start doing surgeries remotely. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the, the sort of things that, that they will do. Um, so let's say, for example, if you have Ooh, somebody who's been in an accident and they're in, I don't know, let, let's just say Arizona in, in America, for example, or, or anywhere, but they don't have a surgeon that's specialist in that, in that location and it might take eight hours to fly in there which would be a problem they can enable 5g technology so he can operate and because of the low latency as he makes a movement or a cut or a, a stitch or whatever in that surgery there'll be virtually no delay mm -hmm. so it, it's like being there and one example we saw in in the seminar was um uh, of a port where instead of having the operator having to sit up in a crane like 20 meters up in the air and in a confined space and not an ideal work environment those same people can now sit in an air-conditioned office and do and and the, the the thing is they were saying it's much now it's much easier now to recruit people into that job oh yeah where previously it wasn't um and ultimately as long as they have a good enough 5G connection from their home. They could actually work from home. Mm. And more and more of these jobs are, are becoming like, it's almost like playing a video game. Yeah. You know, they, they just sit in front of screens and they can see everything that's going on because of course, you can also stream um, 4K HDR video and it's kind of almost real time. Oh, what, what do you think might be like a, a negative application? No, a negative uh, uh, consequence a of A negative all these. consequence? Well, I see, if you look at sort of what are considered to be mundane jobs, mm. there'll be a huge amount of those mundane jobs that will disappear because those, uh, together with 5G and AI and big data, lots and lots of those jobs will become, you know, non-existent. And that I see as a big, negative in society because you'll have a lot of jobs that for lower skilled lower educated people will disappear you know you just take autonomous driving the potential for all taxi driving jobs to disappear is there and that has massive knock-on effects um, however there will be a lot of jobs created but they will be for higher educated people because they will be higher up the chain so i think it's very important that if countries want to deal with this they have to start those education programs to get those higher educated people now but I still think there's, there's obviously lots of people out there who are not going to be able to do that because they just don't have that intelligence and, and that's where I see there's going to be a problem. I mean that, go, that could go on to the, the conversation of you know a potential universal basic income or something like that but that's for a different video yeah. we, won't, we won't go into that but it's, it's up to some people you know in powerful, powerful positions to be foreseeing these things that could happen in society in the future and be working towards a solution. Yeah, I, f I find actually it, it, it's quite interesting here in China because in the next sort of 15 to 20 years, they're gonna have a massive decrease in population. Yeah. And that's not just me saying, if, if you look at the, you yeah, know, the, says, oh, the, the yeah. WHO and, and all these organizations, there is a massive dip in, in population. And a number of people have, have said, experts, analysts have suggested that that might cause a problem because they just won't have enough people to, to fill the jobs. And I can't help thinking that's one of the reasons. I mean, I've, I've, from what I read and what I see, China are one of the countries that are really embracing this 5G yeah. on a big scale. You know, they've, they're have they racing ahead with the rollouts. And, and not only have they, as I said earlier, rolled out that, that infrastructure in all the major cities, but they're now 
there's, there's a massive initiative to get industry and, and commerce involved in, in using that 5G to, to become more efficient. And that efficiency basically means getting rid of staff. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and and th there's going to be this... SD card full. Okay, well, we'll carry on anyway. Yeah. So um, that, that will ultimately mean there'll be a transition where there's probably less jobs available but as the population decreases that will catch up and, and I think that will really put China in a, a very strong position going forward because from, from what I see and read I, obviously I'm not in these other countries I'm not in Europe I'm not in the USA but from what I can see those other places seem to be lagging behind on one the rollout and the implementation um, and that's kind of worrying for, for those countries, I would imagine. I know, because it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, if China are in front on it. So if China are in front in the technology of 5G, when it gets rolled out, that will accelerate that, that, that push ahead even further. So the gap will become bigger, quicker. If that Th makes that's sense. right. And I think one of the reasons that is... Here in China, if you look at the people who are in the senior government positions, many of those people are like scientists, engineers, technical people. And a lot of the initiatives for 5G are not left to private companies here. There's a massive initiative by, right. by government for, for commerce and industry to embrace 5G. So it, it's being driven from, from a very high level, whereas mm -hmm. I feel in Europe, USA, and, and other countries it's left to private companies to do that there's not such a push from the the government you know um, and i actually feel that in the uk i think it, even over many many years that the, the british government have not got behind technology companies like china has mm -hmm. i mean you just look at the big tech companies here and they're huge and they have so many employees working in r d i mean huawei for example they have so many employees working in R&D and they invest so much of their money back into yeah. it that it just makes sense that they would be ahead because of those reasons. Well, ju just in their Dongguan campus, there's more than 20,000 engineers. That's bonkers, and isn't it? It's like, you know, within that mix, there's, there's hundreds of chemists, physicists, mathematicians, electronics engineers, mechanical engineers. So for, for, for these countries to say that, or, or suggest that China are just, just copying things. I, I, I can't accept that, you know. 20,000 engineers, and, and most of those will have very high level qualifications. There'll be a load of PhD people in there. There'll be a load of people with master's degrees as well as bachelor's degrees. They ain't stupid, you know. And just before we round this video off, I wanna add something. We had a conversation with uh, the guy who was taking us around the events uh, yesterday at, with Huawei, and he was saying that there's a kind of collective mindset right now because of all the pressure that's being given from the USA on Huawei, that it's like, they, they've, they've got a say and it's Jayo, it's like, come yeah. on. And like, they all are clubbing together with sort of, come on, let's go, let's do good for the country and the nation together. And just that, them going into work with that mindset every day, I think will propel them forwards even further. Uh, big time, yeah. And this video is getting on, so we will wrap that up right now. I'm very eager to hear what your comments are on this uh, discussion. Uh, so do let them, do comment down below and let us know what you think. If you do want to become a member, you can do so by clicking that join button down below. Appreciate it in advance if you do wish to do that. Drop a like, always helps, and we will see you in the next one. For now, as always, take care. Take care.